Hi everyone, this is Rick Morgan. I'm your friendly comic book scientist and I got curious about differences in what happens to comic book paper when it's exposed to uh, blue light and peroxide. I, I didn't do both, but I tested each. So what I, the test method I chose was FTIR because it's non-destructive. It's Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. And this the experiment I performed was to measure different spots. Now I have a small one and a half millimeter diamond ATR reflectance cell I can use on mine. So I can use a very tiny spot. And so I used these uh, white areas I'll show you here in this video and you can see how the experimental setup worked. So we're going to study this and say that we have this area here was what it initially looked like. We're going to scan this part and this part was light, no peroxide. And this white was peroxide with no light. So we're going to measure those three and see what the differences are between here, here, and here. So I'll show you here the three spectra I got. This initial one on the top here in blue is the initial paper, untreated. And the blue light paper, which was for five hours, blue light treatment. And I did uh, three doses of sp with a spray bottle. I didn't measure how much of peroxide, of 6% peroxide. Uh, just about three pumps with my bottle uh, every hour for three hours and let it dry naturally and so, saw what that did so that was uh, that's what I got the effect that I had and you'll notice that the first two the initial paper and the blue light paper don't look much different here even though the color is different now remember this is infrared so it's not detecting what we see visibly but if anything's happening to the molecules to the bending stretching wagging of the of the molecules in the paper itself. Now I didn't. I thought I would see some cellulose, but I don't see a lot of cellulose. Now, what does it look like to me? It looks like cellulose a little bit, especially this part right here, which is famous for being CH stretching, and then this little tiny bump here, which is probably the um, the carbonyl group C double bond O and the NH groups might be. I, I'm not 100% sure honestly, but the rest of it looks a lot like kaolin. Now kaolin, what is kaolin? Kaolin is a commercially sold clay that is often used as a filler for paint, ceramics, uh, other materials like that. And it is, uh, the term kaolin comes from kaolinite, which then first originally comes from the word kaoling, which is a province in China where locals use this clay for making ceramics and porcelain. It's, it is hydrated aluminum silicate. So it's aluminum oxide and it's Al2O3 and SiO2 and water. So it's mostly alumina and silica. So lots of oxygen and, and silicon. And it's distinguished from other clay type minerals because it's very soft and white. And it's easily dis dispersed in water and other solutions. And it's it helps to distribute things and make things easy to manufacture. And uh, mostly in ceramics and as a filler for rubber. So uh, pure kaolin is 46% silicate and 40% alumina and 14% water, but it's mostly just mined. People don't really make the stuff normally, but they also will sometimes put titan, which is TiO2, uh, titanium dioxide, and uh, iron rust, Fe2O3, and lime calcium hydroxide, and also they'll put potassium hydroxide in it as well. But it's, it's formed from weathering and crystalline rocks, especially um, in acidic areas, and so they, they just for, sort of form naturally. And the, it's, it's a clay that they use in, in manufacturing. So uh, in the crystalline form, you can, you can measure it with a XRD a crystalline, but FTIR, we use the, this spectra here. And I'll show you the, the uh, library file of kaolin here. So you can see what this looks like. Now, why would this be on a comic book? It is... Um, well, I could go into the chemistry all day long about what this thing looks like and, and the, the structure of it. And I think I will show you briefly, I will show you a little page of what this looks like. But then um, you should know that there's a, um, that in paper, it is um, used to make the paper lay flat in the manufacturing and it, it's sort of a, a protective agent on the surface of it when it's made in the more uh, the paper industry, other than a filler, which is sometimes used to just sort of take up the space in it, uh, it serves as a coating or wrapping for the cellulose fibers when the paper is, is made. That's why I'm seeing it here, right? You're seeing all the kaolin first and, 
and not the, the cellulose, which is the paper in this particular one. It's also widely used in the paint industry and ink and, and medicines. and all, It's all over the place. This stuff is, is everywhere. So this is what we're seeing here is, is this kaolin. And I won't go into too much technical detail. But here's an FTIR spectra of kaolin. And here's an FTIR spectra of cellulose. Now, I believe, it's my thought, that these split peaks around 2900 are the CH bonds in paper. And the peaks down a little further south, around 15 to 1750, are the carbonyl groups and the NH stretches in the cellulose. So why are we seeing more? Why are we forming bonds in the peroxide and not in, why would we think we'd be breaking them, right? I don't think that's what's happening. I think what's happening is that we are removing the kaolin and exposing the cellulose. So I think the peroxide it might be removing the kaolin, exposing the cellulose fibers, and we see that in an increase in these peaks here and here. You can feel it in the paper when you put peroxide on it, that it gets rougher. Many times it is much rougher than it was initially. And if you leave it on too long, it will be very evident that's rough and it will eventually become brittle. Uh, I think that's what we're seeing here in this particular, I don't know it, but I think that's true. Um, what's the message here? What's the lesson? The lesson is that we be careful when adding peroxide. We don't want to add too much for too long. A little bit might be okay, but the stuff can be dangerous. can remove things that are meant to protect the paper and, and make it it's smooth. So um, just be a little bit cautious. You can get the same, I, I have experienced getting the same uh, color photo bleaching with just uh, blue light with much longer period of time. Proxy makes it go a lot faster uh, without as much damage to, to the paper. So um, just keep that in mind. I hope this video, I hope you find this video interesting and helpful. Um, take care. Bye-bye. Uh, take care. See ya.